OK, the Katie Taylor fight is this weekend on the undercard. Dennis Hogan uh, defending his IBO super welterweight world title. Dennis, welcome home. Yeah, it's good to be back here, mate. Yeah, finally, uh, after all this time fighting here in Ireland, you know. What's it like? Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, the buzz is fantastic. Um, happy to get up to Dublin, but I uh, was here for three weeks um, preparing in Kildare and uh, everything's gone to plan, so it's exciting. So for people who don't know, you've been in Australia a long time at this stage. Yeah, yeah, um, maybe 12 years or something. I went over uh, 2011, early 2011 to, to to get a few fights and probably was planning on basing myself in America, but got there and uh, grew roots and uh, and here we are. <laughs> so just spool back a bit. Um, you fought as an amateur. When did you decide to go pro? Oh, look, you remember um, the recession kicked in 2008 and I was a carpenter for 10 years and things got a little... Uh, it was just getting to that point where I was either going to go professional now or not and then there was no shows pretty much in Ireland around that time or very little and I knew there was a uh, load of shows going on in Australia so uh, I went back there and... And, and was, uh, it, was it obvious to go to Australia? Like, how did the idea come about? Oh, well, not not to everyone, it wouldn't have been but I, I'd gone over there on an Irish team so um, and then I was told, you know, if you ever want to go because I, I sort of did have a bit of a pro style about me anyway um, and I was told if you ever want to go back and get a fight you can come back here and, and, and that's what I did So you turned pro essentially over there basically mm. Right Yeah not not a well-worn path in Irish boxing history. Not many people have done that before, have they? Yeah, but well, one person had done it before me, Dean Byrne from Crumlin, had gone over and done the same thing. Right. Um, uh, so um, there was a little bit of a path there, that, but um, but I was happy to, to to go over. I had been there backpacking for a year. I, I really did like Brisbane, so I said, why not go back there and 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 you know do your do your morning runs in the sun. <laughs> when you say you did have a pro style, maybe explain that to people what that uh, entails. Like why 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 did you suit the professional ranks particularly? Well, well, for me especially was um, just that you know the third round we'd be in the third round and uh, the fight would be over and um, and I would have had a lot more to give. I'd be just warming into the fight, so we knew that longer rounds was going to suit me. Um, I've got a great chin and um, and uh, you know I just that longer grueling sort of battle against someone in amateur boxing. It's in how fast as you can get the points and even though I developed a good skill in terms of hit and not be hit fast. Uh, pro pro did suit me better. Yeah, have you enjoyed the the smack talk element of it as well? The little bit of build up to fights and uh, James Metcalf is your is your uh, opponent this weekend. But has that been a a friendly build up or one filled with aggro or how's Ah, look, no, I, I I didn't come over for the press conference early, and um, he had a little bit to say. He seems confident, but uh, nothing I haven't heard before. I've heard it all, and uh, it's all a bit of fun. Usually, when people are are going on and on, they usually tell you exactly how they're feeling and thinking, and in a funny, strange way. So I usually like to let people talk and it usually lets me know where they're at you know <laughs> so you're talking on the ring that's it yeah that's, I mean at the end of the day why why buy into it all when when the, when the bell goes it all happens there so it's, it's all fun and games really until the bell goes you used to go to the Bernard Dunn fights yeah, yeah look the, I mean this is this is amazing for me I, I remember being at those fights and even when he made his homecoming in the National Stadium um, I remember being there and being amazed by the whole spectacle of professional boxing which was completely different to, to the amateur um, in terms of spectacle but um, that was brilliant and, and even when I won my title I got a brilliant message I only seen a week after the win of Bernard saying well done Dennis world champion and um, and I still I, I, I've looked at that video again last week just and it got me excited again for what's going to happen in the tree arena where I used to watch him fight a lot back in the day so it's a very exciting time you know full circle yeah, um, full circle yeah it, it sounds like it wasn't always your intention to go pro. Like, if, if the recession hadn't come and your carpentry business had been going well, would you have been happy out with a really good amateur career and getting into business and staying? Like, is there a sliding doors moment here where you're, there's a completely different world where you're doing analysis of fights, you're training in, in a local club here and you're happy? Or would you have been completely unfulfilled, do you think, if you hadn't taken the path you've taken? Well, it's funny enough because as, as a kid... Um, uh, as a, I think just before I hit my teenage years, if someone asked me what do you want to be when you grow up, I used to say a carpenter and a professional boxer. So professional boxing was always on my horizon. It wasn't that very, it wasn't very conscious of it. 
throughout my amateur days. But then there was a moment, like you say, it just it just came and said, right, it's now or never. Now I'm, it's getting to that time, and then with with everything kicking in the way it did, and uh, I I was ready to make a bit of a change in life anyway. You know, I'd done ten years as a carpenter here, and I felt like I'd nearly done a lifetime. So it was time to to move on and and just do that as well. And and the opportunity arose. Uh, Australia obviously isn't just professional boxing is it you've got loads of other things going on out there as well you've kind of mm. developed different strands to your life and your career yeah that's it look there's a I mean it's a massive sporting country in terms of everything everything they do they want to be the best at and there's a there's a massive uh, competition there for everything um but you know the domestic scene over there. People didn't know when I was there. Like I had everything I needed to become the boxer I was with sparring and and everything. And people didn't really give it the weight it, it it deserved. And now you have a champion nearly in every a world champion in every weight over there. Andrew uh, Jason Maloney just won a world championship again, and we have my sparring partner Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao. And um, you know there's, there's there's so many great fighters there. And I was lucky that I was in that domestic league getting better getting better getting better and when I get onto the world scene then uh, I was ready and that's what, that, that was something that people didn't know about Australia you know? You're slightly older coming to that level of, of professional boxing than most people as well is that part of being ready too that actually uh, you, you never fully understand the value of maturity until you look back and you go okay I made a good decision there that maybe I wouldn't have made in my 20s yeah, I know. Yeah, look, I mean, that that certainly was the way with me. Sometimes people could have screamed stuff at me and I wouldn't have heard what they were saying until I was ready to hear it. I was one of those people. But, uh, but uh, you know, in terms of um, being 38 and still boxing, I don't know what's gone on or what, why, but um, I've just seemed to get, get, get fitter, healthier and better with age. So, uh, uh, like, you know, people should be slowing down. I think it's the passion that I have for boxing and the goals. And how determined I am to hit them that um, that I have this sort of longevity, the fact that I, I I hit and not be hit is sort of my main thing, and I don't get into big wars and like Metcalf will try to drag me into a war here. There's no doubt, and that's probably his his best opportunity of winning. But you know, for me, it's about just you doing what I do best and just avoiding that. I'll I'll put my foot in the tire when it's time when I want to, but it's about dictating myself and, and getting there, you know. I'd read that after your third fight, you you know, you gave up alcohol, you started focusing heavily on your diet, training, probably went up another notch. Did something click in your brain at that point that you were like, right, I'm, I'm really going to focus on this now? Yeah, yeah, well, that's it. Like, you know, that's my tattoo here says, give it everything you've got. My grandfather, the, it's, see, I didn't know it at the time because I was actually annoyed at the time. But it's actually nearly something you'd see in a movie when he had, he knew I was partying one night and he said, he said, just give up that drink, son, and give it everything you've got. And he and he passed the phone back to my mum. Little did I know they would be the last conscious words he'd ever say to me. All right. So after I went and had a draw and then uh, in my third fight and then he passed away, it hit me. I was like, what am I doing? Like This, is, this isn't an amateur where you can have losses and it doesn't mean anything. This is a professional boxing career, and and a loss sets you back years, especially at at this point in my career. But so I just went all in, and just yeah, and and it was the best decision I'd ever made in my whole life. Paddy Burke is the grandfather that yes, you have the tattoo. Quite, he was a renowned coach himself. That's right. Yeah, he brought me along from the age of six or seven to Nace Boxing Club, um, and um, you know I, I was there as a kid and underage fighting up to the age of eleven, and then competitive till. Till, till 13, till I went to Grange Con, he, he gave it up after that. But um, he was always there, he was always in my corner, he was always a big influence on me, yeah. He was in the you, blood then. You weren't, oh, yeah. You weren't ready to hear that. Wasn't ready, yeah. Oh, but up, up to that point, I wasn't ready to, to hear anything. Um, not that anyone was screaming at me. Like I, It's like, you know, it, it sort of got blown out of proportion back in the day. You know, Dennis did this, did that, and uh, headlines, and, uh, you know, a, a grilling on KFM. But What kind but, of stuff? I missed all that, sorry. Oh, well, it was just all, you know, um, about being an alcoholic and, and all this stuff. And there was there was spreads going on, and I got grilled. And I was, you know, was it a case, Dennis, to be bottles in your bags? I was like, no, mate. I wasn't sleeping rough. I wasn't. This is on the radio. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Jesus. So there was all that going on, and even I mean, I mean, there was a bit of a pressure then after that to just make sure that uh, you know, because people were probably worried then if they thought. But it was never like that. I was just, I was just a bucko, um, and I, and I liked messing with the boys, and, and we did all that, and we did a bit of partying. But then, it, you know, and then as an amateur, I would sort of, I didn't have big aspirations to go to the Olympics or World Championships. So I was a carpenter, I was a boxer, and I was just, a, I was just a boy, you know, I was just a, a, a man coming up and. And then when I went professional, though, 
um, just dropping all of that just it, it didn't happen as quick as it should have and then this story is not a million miles away from Eric's Eric yeah. Donovan's story like you know and obviously from 20, 15 miles down the road of each other you, you both have to have these moments mm. where you recognise I need to change yeah yeah that's it well I mean that I mean that's what it was and um, I, I knew that it wasn't it wasn't good overall, but you just sort of you're not ready to sort of hear it. You're not ready to take it on. You think you're invincible and you're young. And so your grandfather's passing is is that moment dropping? Is it? Yeah, yeah, because he'd said the words to me, and then and then um, when I went home to see him, he was passing away. He was actually unconscious. I didn't get to speak to him, and then I came home. Uh, it was a quick turnaround, and I had a draw in a fight that I should have easily won. And um, and then uh, you know just things was going on, and then he passed away, and I just went what. Like, what am I doing? This needs to stop, and I need to go all in, you know. And 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 I did. I did go all in, you know. So, what does that mean, going all in? Like, yeah, just everything. I, I call it monk mode. I got, you know, just in terms of everything. I'm in monk mode now. Eleven weeks, no nothing, live like a monk. Just focused on winning. Game plan is the most thing I think about. And you know, obviously, I'm a dad at the weekends, and I'll take my rest time and. I do what I need to do, but in terms of everything else, it's like there's no, there's no outside distraction in, in any capacity for 12 weeks, um, for sure. And you just do everything legit, you know, and just have that discipline. Uh, obviously, you've made the point about boxing in Australia being so big and the quality of, of fighters is, is so huge. At the same time, is there part of you that would like a period now where a, a big performance this weekend gives you an opportunity to fight in the Northern Hemisphere for a little while before you wrap up or does it matter? Like, what's the... Yeah, look, uh, so, you know, the last fight got the monkey off my back and that was all due to the, the Mexico fight too where everybody in the whole world thought I won except the, except the judges that were sitting there and, and that was just, that was eating away at me every conversation I had with everyone so winning that title got the monkey off my back now I've just I'm here and I'm enjoying it I've done this my whole life uh, I was very passionate to get back and defend the world title in Dublin that's happening right now um, so right now I'm just in a great flow but I do have a three fight deal with Matchroom and um, th there is a three fights there but the better the better contract is executed if I keep winning and um, and you know I'm just I'm not, I, when I get this feeling, I, I'm usually right, and I feel like this is going to be my best performance ever. That good country here down in Moon, that good recovery, the way I've done everything, the way my training is, the way I've finished off and I've peaked, has been perfection, and I expect that I'll be putting on the best performance ever. And the the three fight deal, obviously they're global, but would would that be focused in this part of the world? Do you think? Well, look, uh, I mean, uh, that Crow Park fight is still yet to happen, so everything going well with Katie's fight and. Um, and everything else, um, uh, I, I think that that fight would probably happen this year too. So, just I just all I need to focus on is keep winning, and that's something I'm good at. So, did I read your distantly possibly related to Michael Hogan shot in Bloody Sunday in Croke Park? Did I read that somewhere? Yeah, look, uh, down 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 the line, there, there will be, yeah, for sure. And um, you know, it's a uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty proud of that heritage. To be fair, you know, I certainly haven't sat down either when when people have come come for me in any capacity. So. Uh, we, yeah. That that monk mode that you mentioned. Do you find that um, arduous? Is it tough? Are you comfortable in it? Like, are you comfortable at your weight at the moment that you're fighting? That is, is it all a, an eleven week uh, torture, or is it an eleven week of enjoyment for nah, you? No, it's 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 the first week or two. But 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 then you you, you start to zone in on an, on an energy. I like to visualize. I like uh, meditation. I like you know all that kind of stuff. And after about a week or two, when you just shut out all outside distractions, I mean that's that comes down to everything. That comes down to bedroom activities. Comes down to everything. Just complete monk mode, and you go into this serenity, um, and you just start to get your vibration up, and everything starts to unfold as it will. And uh, and that's um, and that's something that I that's the, the the vibration I believe you need to be in when you're going in, and then it starts to come out in your in your um, in your training and the way you execute your game plan and your clarity and you know just uh, yeah and it's just single focus for, for one thing and one thing only to come out and have an excellent performance on fight night that visualisation that you mentioned like is that something that you so you, uh, you obviously think about the ring walk weeks in advance you think about the smells of the three arena the sights the sounds what the mm. fans are going to sound like um, 
even the music I, th- I think you're you're picking a different mm. song for your walk on yeah, this weekend right. yeah I've changed it a bit yeah. you're not going to tell us obviously what it is it's a surprise nah, let it happen yeah but but you're right I mean this I mean you know if anyone tries to tell you the visual visualisation doesn't work me walking out w- with a title belt in the tree arena after starting to visualise that when I, sta- when I started to see I started the spar world champions and stuff in Australia like Daniel Gale and that and I started to realise well if I keep going and keep putting in I could actually get there and when I started to believe with everything and um, and the way everything has just unfolded, it's major coincidental, you know, if it's not actually uh, vibration. But it is vibration. It's about putting your putting your thoughts and being able to being able to feel it before it happens. And you know, and uh, and this is this is why everything is is unfolding right now because I've visualised it nearly every single day all this all this time. You know. When did you understand all this? What what was the reading or the path of the person? It's, it's, that a, it's a really funny story, and um, uh, I fought um, on on a team in England. I beat actually, uh, I had a great win in in Birmingham. I beat a fella called Jimmy McCann, who had been the um, the, the the English captain, and we went over and we boxed against a team there in Birmingham, and. Um, and uh, Kelly Harrington on the way back said to me, "Do you know, Dennis? There's a there's a great book I'm going to recommend you. It's called The Secret." So she told me that anyway, and I didn't go read it straight away, but um, it ended up getting handed to me in a hard time. Our, our house got flooded and stuff, and I got stuck in, and I read it, and it was just I was going through some hard thing, times, and I started to execute the law of attraction, and um, and lo and behold, uh, a lot of things started to happen. Now it's not all about being positive all the time. It's not. It's about balance. But if you can get yourself to that feeling, and you can see it, and you can feel it, then it starts to happen. And then I, I went on this whole sort of journey um, for years looking up everything I could and you know now I'm uh, went to seminars about vibration and visualisation Mitchell B and MJB seminars about success and stuff and I've done all that work and um, you know I've got a I've got a mission I've got a purpose I know my why and um, and I'm ready to execute Saturday and that's just part of it it's not everything it's it's part of a much bigger why and, and mission so um, I read an interview you did with Robert Mulhern in the Leinster Leader back in, in 2018 he talked about you doing public speaking in Australia. Is that still something that, that's part of your life? It's something that I genuinely love to do, and I think that this boxing story, uh, every every next chapter um, actually adds another element to it. But uh, I can go up and, and 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 speak about all sorts of stuff like of, of uh, overcoming adversity, um, you know, goal setting, you know, all sorts of every, every anything that fits into my journey, which is pretty much everything. Uh, I really do enjoy going up and speaking about, and uh, I'd like to make it something. Uh, of a of a of a career after my after my boxing, yeah. I was going to ask because this doesn't feel like a homecoming ending. You know, it's it's a three fight deal. There's there's stuff in the future. You're not ready to retire yet, but at the same time, it's good to have this sense of another person developing at the same time as the boxer is continuing to develop. Because at some point, the boxer will stop being the boxer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And uh, again, I've already loved to do it for years. Um, after after. Um, you know the, the the losses there of 2019. I actually just pulled back and said, you know what, I'm not doing any more now. It's like I, I've stood there and I've thought about I said about overcoming and keep going and never give up. I've spoke about this on stage and it's been recorded. And I thought, wow, I actually have to go and win a world championship now because if I don't, I was just you know just talking talking garbage. So I've gone and I've and I've actually lived up to it, and I think that all that will play in nicely when I step on stage again the next time I do. So you seem in a good place, like as you say, knowing your why. Like you mentioned that Mungia decision in 2019 was remarkably controversial, mm. but you seem to be in a place now where you won't let the highs take you too high, and you won't let those lows take you too low. So that's a a nice balanced place to be. You, you, well, you're dead right. I think uh, fighters like myself, you know, Tyson Fury and, and many other, we can actually we can tend to be quite bipolar. We go very high and go very low. And uh, but I do have mantras and stuff like that to stop me from to be centered and be balanced. Um, when the high goes high, I can nearly expect something to to give me something to come crashing down. And the more I balance that myself and regulate it in myself. Uh, the more um, it stops the lows and the highs going to. So it's, it's really just about uh, humbling yourself when things are going good and, um, and and not being too hard on yourself when things are going bad. So Have you, uh, co- have you come to the meditation recently or has that been a long time? Uh, no, it's, it's been a long time. I didn't realise how much I actually did it naturally before I, I understood. You know, I, I love to walk in the evening. It helps me sleep. And, um, 
you know, I'm lucky that I live in Brisbane beside the sea and I, I didn't know what, uh, you know, I've been, I've been walking in nature for a very long time, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, it, it comes to me quite quickly anyway. I can zone out quite, quite quickly and just feel good about myself. And when you spend time in that space, it starts to show up in your life as well, you know. What challenge will James Metcalf provide for you this weekend? You said you expect him to make it a war. How how will he try and do that? Well, look, I believe that in terms of skill and ability, um, I'm I'm, I, you know, I'd be superior there, and um, he he will try to make it a dog fight. You know, he he he'll he'll come in and give it everything to try and get me to fight his fight. You know, but it's about me being a matador in, in this situation. And I do love a fight and a rip, and, and, and I'll let it happen, but it'll be on my terms when it happens. And uh, if I can do that again, like I do with fighters, I'll break his heart, and, and, and he'll feel that, and he'll get very very lethargic and out of ideas, uh, uh, you know, through, through halfway through the fight and onwards. Do you know what time you're scheduled for the ring walk? I think I could be somewhere around 8.30. I right. think I've, it's... Uh, it's uh, I'm I'm used to being the last fight, if not you know co-main, but um, you know Matchroom I think have me on third last this time, so is what it is. An early night for me is a change, but it's 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 good. It should be pretty full, I think. Uh, people getting in early to experience the the whole uh, extravaganza that will be Katie Taylor's homecoming. So I'd say there'll be a big crowd for you. Should yeah. be. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Well, listen, we wish you the very best. It's been an incredible journey and it's clearly not finished. So uh, whatever happens this weekend, we wish you the very best. Dennis, it does feel like the whole country, certainly the comments coming in are, are uh, a great chat with Dennis. Best of luck to him. Uh, people are behind you. So best of luck. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank and uh, Dennis Hogan fighting James Metcalf on the Katie Taylor undercard this weekend and giving us a hint that maybe Croker is on the, on the horizon still too.